turning back. No turning back. Amen, amen. Now, let's go on ahead sa ating lesson this morning. And uh, every Monday, we're studying on the King James Bible, studies on the King James Bible. It's what I have told you earlier, that this has been more than a year of, of discussion in, with regards to our lessons. And we have already discussed a lot of things and, and we're not finished yet. We still have a lot of things to talk about. It is a subject natin. Just bear with us every Monday and we will learn more and appreciate more what the Lord has, what kind of book that the Lord has given us in the King James Bible. And of course, in this topic, to make a short, because maybe we might we might spend a lot of time just reviewing. But I I want to pursue po mga kapatid. You may watch the previous lessons that we have po mga kapatid. Uh, dati, uh, para makahabol po kayo po mga kapatid. Amen. Uh, uh, you may you may you may review some of those things. Para makahabol po tayo, but uh, uh, but we'll I'll attempt to uh, to continue where we stop, okay? But, but just to give you a background, especially for those who are new in every Monday lessons that we have, because it's been a long, long ano po mga kapatid, time na hindi na din tayo. It's been three weeks na nagkaro nag off po tayo dito sa atin pong work stressor. So rightly na i ano na lang natin. I remind ko kayo kung ano natutunan po natin. So dito po sa ating programa, as we've been learning every Monday, as a topic where we left off is we are studying the men behind our pure English Bible. Men behind the pure English Bibles. So of course, when we talk about the pure English Bibles, where we, we even discuss the, the seven purification of the English Bible starting from, from uh, William Tyndale, no? Then to... to to the Coverdale Bible, all the way to the King James Bible, and the seventh is the King James Bible. Okay, we have the Tyndale Bible, we have the the we have the Coverdale Bible, we have the Matthews Bible, which is the pseudo name of John Roger, and uh, the Matthews Bible. Then we have also the the Great Bible. Which is a different thing, po mga kapatid. Then we we have also the the Geneva Bible. We have also the Bishop's Bible. Then the King James Bible, po mga kapatid. So of course I don't have to go through. I'm I'm just talking about the pure English Bibles, and the seventh of that is. By the way, they're all connected to the Tyndale text, to the Tyndale text, po mga kapatid. So anyway, we've been talking about the men like. Uh, a man behind for our pure English Bible, of course. Uh, see, we are also talking about. First off, we learn about the life of William Tyndale. No, no, not William Tyndale. Ang una natin. We learn about the life of John Wycliffe. John Wycliffe. So we have a we have a a a a son, a kid, anak ng isang mga members po namin dito sa church, at ang tawag ng kanyang ang name niya ay si Wycliffe. And he had a brother before, and ang pangalan ay Lollards. Of course, the the student of Wycliffe, ang tawag nila ay mga Lollards. And uh, of course, uh, uh, he's with the Lord now. And but that was uh, in memory po sa pangalan po ng John Wycliffe because ginamit siya. He was the father of ano po. Uh, he's the morning star of Reformation, and ginamit siya to have a first English. Bible, okay, complete English Bible printed. Na makita po natin uh, yung William Tin, uh, yung yung Wycliffe's Bible. Then we have the we, we studied also the life of of Desiderius Erasmus. Amen. We studied the life of Desiderius Erasmus. What's Desiderius Erasmus? Ay wala naman siyang sinulat na mga wala naman siyang translate na king na English. Translation or English Bible, pero siya yung ginamit ng Panginoon na magkaroon tayo ng, ng good English translation. Okay, dahil, bakit? Dahil sa kanyang text, sa kanyang sinulat na Greek text, na Erasmus Greek text, doon nakabasi si William Tyndale at ang ating mga King James Translator 
Sa pagdating po sa Greek text po mga kapatid. So ginamit yun. That's why we studied about Desiderius Erasmus. We studied about his life and accomplishment and, and his spirituality, his belief. Many aspects na pinag-discuss po natin. Next is we study also the life of uh, William Tyndale. William Tyndale, uh, of course, men behind the Tyndale Bible. We know he was martyred. We know he was martyred and his crime was was he was burnt at stake po mga kapatid and his crime was what to translate the bible into english and of course ang kanyang contribution ay ito ay nagiging ginamit ng panginoon ang kanyang translation para magiging source of translations din ng english translation sa mga next na mga english na mga uh, especially sa lalong-lalo na sa king james bible just for your information I'd like you to know that 80% of the King James text, are you listening? 80% of the King James text, okay, is a Tyndale text. Okay, ganun ang kalaki ang contribution ni William Tyndale. So we also studied about the, uh, the life of Coverdale, which was the student of Tyndale who picked up yung yung hindi natapos ni William Tyndale na translation siya ang nag nagkumpleto and another student of William Tyndale we studied also the life of John Rogers he was also the student of Tyndale and he was also martyred just like William Tyndale and what was their case because they translated the bible then we also studied the life of King James of course the the king who authorized the translation of the authorized version of 1611, the King James Bible, was King James. We studied about him. We look at his life. We know that he's a godly king. He's a Christian king. He's a Christian author. He's a king of conviction. And one of his first projects as a king was to translate the Bible, amen, for the English people. And not only to have liberty of printings of Bible in his time, but also to make a pure word of God available for the English-speaking people at that time, po mga kapatid. So such a such a godly king, and a, uh, no wonder why God can use such king, po mga kapatid. And he's a very decorated person in history. There's a lot of rumors about him, but we know it's not true. It was against ano lang sa kanila po, but as we study this biography, look at it, at napaka dami natin natutunan. Ako mismo ay nabibless sa kanyang buhay. And this time, of course, he, he, he called 20, uh, uh, he called uh, 54 men po mga kapatid or in total para po mag-translate po ng King James at ito po yung mga King's Translators. Ang last time nating pinag-usapan is we talk about the King's Translators or men behind the King James Bible. That, that's Doon tayo nagtapos. At napakita ko sa inyo yung overview, yung the committee men. These are the committee men for the King James translation po mga kapatid. And these men are very special. And, and we believe po mga kapatid that such kind of men will never appear again sa ating history because they're so special. Kasi bakit iba na ang panahon eh? Hindi mo na yung revival na naranasan nila, I don't think would would be experienced again sa panahon po natin in these days of apostasy. And this iba yung kalibre po nila po mga kapatid. The, the King James translators, we know they were born and live their adult lives with frightfully close view. They have that close view of the persecuting shadow of the blood of Bloody Mary, Queen Bloody Mary the first of England. You remember that? I, I, I give emphasis on that. They were eyewitnesses. Some of those martyrs who were bur burned at stakes were their fathers. Some of them were their uncles. Some of, them were, some of them were their pastors, were related to them. But uh, by seeing as direct ano po, witness of that awful event, of that bloody event, that wicked event that has been sponsored by bloody queen mary the first i it it ignites their heart it provokes them to to produce the truth yun yung nagiging isa sa mga motivating factor nila 
they were just little kids and let some of them were young men while seeing some of the people whom they knew uh, were burned at stake at that time and you have to understand that so they 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 that that th those were their days they're not the days of mickey mouse they're not the days of hollywood they're not the days of they're not the days of sports they're not the days of uh, of of entertainment but those are the days of heroes the days of 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 martyrs and of saints po mga kapatid and those are yung tinitingnan nila they become their inspiration at habang sila ay at big enough adult and uh, while they're getting their education and preparing themselves for the work of the translation yun ang nagiging inspiration po nila yun ang nagiging motivation po nila po mga kapatid hindi sila hindi sila nang hina but rather nag nagdevelop ng courage sa kanila na magkaroon po so napaka napaka decorated po yung yung history ng mga men na ito as we discuss siguro may mga ilan tayong mapag-usapan mamaya po mga kapatid and of course uh, those times ang bible the first the, they knew firsthand that rome alam nila they knew firsthand that rome and its rulers could tolerate the Bible, but the Bible must be bound only in letters of Greek, in letters of Latin, and in Hebrew, but bawal pag English. Ganun po, ganun po ang kanilang na, na, nasumpungan na panahon. Pinagbabawal ang English Bible, mga kapatid. So, they they know, there were eyewitnesses that those Romans, Roman Catholics, or those Romish ruler po, mga kapatid, would burn book by book Word by word, an English Bible which the Holy Ghost could speak directly to man. Anybody would caught reading, anybody would caught bringing the book would be liable to death or to be burned at stake po mga kapatid. So yun po ang problema. That's their time that they lived in. Amen. But under the bright of Queen Elizabeth I after the death of her sister Bloody Mary, those are a reign of terror for six years. Imagine, reign of terror for six years. And finally, there was a light shining. Amen. Shown in the English Bible during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I from 1558 all the way to 1603. And the translators along with all of England could easily study the English Bible ng panahon na yan because there is now freedom to read the English Bible dati pinagbabawal but in the time of Bloody Mary there is a breakthrough po mga kapatid and that paves the way po mga kapatid for, for the opportunity for these translators at their young age po mga kapatid, to learn the Bible with liberty and freedom po mga kapatid and even Elizabeth Queen Elizabeth okay Queen Elizabeth during her coronation the gift okay of, by the protestants to the coronation of queen elizabeth was the bible po mga kapatid nung binigyan siya ng bible english bible it was the tindale bible nung binigyan po siya po mga kapatid ay hinalikan niya at ang kanyang kanyang niyakap po mga kapatid and of course during his speech in 1599 that was that was uh at least, mga kapatid, four years bago po siya mamatay. Okay? At meron po siyang charge sa mga pastors at sa mga ministers of God. And, and uh, let me quote. And sabi niya, They shall discourage no man from reading of any part of the Bible in English, but shall rather exhort every person to read the same with great humility and reverence as the very lively word of God and especially food of man's soul, which all persons can bound to embrace, believe, and follow if they look to be saved. So that was an exhortation of a queen. Could you imagine a queen could exhort that every person is to read, amen, with great humility and reverence the word of God. Can you imagine that such decree of a queen, Pumapted, such a godly queen, Pumapted. By the way, Queen Elizabeth was the son of the Christian Anne Boleyn, Queen Anne Boleyn, the second wife of the second wife of Henry VIII. That was the mother. Okay, that 
Anne Boleyn was the disciple of William Tyndale po mga kapatid. So ganun yung connection ni Tyndale sa mga monarchs at even sa Bible na meron po tayo ngayon po mga kapatid. Amen. So of course, that light uh, shined doon po sa mga King James translators natin and that gives the background, such background to the King James translators. Amen. At yun po yung, yung panahon po nila na talagang may liberty and freedom na magbasa ng salita ng, ng Diyos po mga kapatid. So the translators, we know these translators, they were the top achievers in England at that time and not only academically but also spiritually. So imagine they are the best not only sa academics but even in their spirituality, they are very well known The, they had risen to the position of college presidents some of them some of them are deans some of them are heads of schools and presidents and some of them are head of the departments of greek hebrew and latin language po mga kapatid they were not only preachers listen they were not only preachers but they're also pastors they're doctors they're scholars they're linguists ito mga translators na ito but they had surpassed thousands of men they have surpassed thousands of men with similar training during a time when speaking greek or speaking latin or speaking hebrew po mga kapatid and foreign languages was common for university students so they're that the best they're the top po mga kapatid but not only sa secular not only sa academics but even in their devotion to god even in their even in their love for the word of god they are unparalleled they are the king's choice po mga kapatid itong committee men behind the king james bible po mga kapatid their exceptional god given abilities Yes, that is exceptional. I don't think uh, somebody with us right now in our generation or a generation after their generation could could level with the same level or could surpass with such. They're, they have such exceptional God-given abilities. But the good thing is coupled with diligence and abiding walk with the Lord. Yun po yung exceptional po doon. Amen. Because they're so balanced po mga kapatid and set them at the pinnacle of the academic environment where school children were educated at a level that of many of today's university students, above the level of many, many universities today, po mga kapatid. So of course, po mga kapatid, the king appointed 54 men, but the official list, po mga kapatid, was 47, is the extant, po mga kapatid. And three or four of the most ancient scholars, as required by rule number 15 in translation, are not actual members of the committee, but they are just the oversight po mga kabatid. Some of them died, hindi natapos yung, yung, yung tawag nito, hindi natapos yung translation kasi ang translation work is for seven years from 1604 all the way to 1611 that's for seven years po mga kapatid bago na kumpleto na kumpleto yung yung work of translation po mga kapatid but as they insist po mga kapatid may isang missing daw sa 54 na hindi nila pinangalanan pero ang sabi po ng mga ng mga translators and the name of the 54th is like the son of god So they credit it to ano po mga kapatid. So they were divided into three groups. Let me let me share my slides po mga kapatid para makita po natin. They were divided into three groups para para mabilis no. Uh, saan ba yung aking ito? And first off is the, that's the that's the Westminster group. That's the first group po mga kapatid. And uh, ito po ang, ang mga members ng Westminster Group. Ito po yung mga names. And some of them po mga kapatid, kasi sila ang una nating pag-aaralan mamaya, some of them is we're going to talk about. Okay, we're going to talk about ngayong umaga. Uh, we will start with the Westminster Group. That's the names ng Westminster Group po mga kapatid. And the second group, the second company is the Oxford Group. And the names of the translators were I was pre I presented you last time, and our lesson this morning is to detail some of them. Because 
Uh, dami niya, no? Hindi naman natin pwedeng maisa-isa yan. But if we have time, we will try our best po, mga kapatid. So the Oxford group, these are the Oxford. So the first group is the Westminster group. This time is the Oxford group. And the third group was the Cambridge group. And these are the members of the Cambridge group, po, mga kapatid, which I'm so excited to talk about some of these wonderful names, po, mga kapatid. Maybe unknown, maybe unknown to many of us right now, but to God, I don't, I don't think so, po, mga kapatid. And because the Lord has used them mightily, po, mga kapatid. So those are the groups, mga kapatid, na nagikita po natin and dapat na maintindihan po natin, you know. So uh, and of course, we studied about their beliefs. We look at their beliefs, po, mga kapatid. Ano yung mga position nila about Jesus Christ, that Jesus, they believe that Jesus Christ is God. Okay? And they, we look at their beliefs on the scripture. Anong, anong belief nila sa position nila sa scripture? They believe that the, the Bible is inspired word of God, even in a translation, that, the, that translation is not a barrier to inspiration. So that's their belief. And that's very important. Why? The belief of the translators is very important because the, 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 the translation is just the reflection of the belief or the position of the translator. Just for instance, ang mga modern version, the first ever modern version po mga kapatid is the revised version. Is the revised version. At ang mga translators ng revised version ay hindi po sila, karamihan sa kanila ay hindi Trinitarian. Hindi naniniwala ng Trinity. Isa po doon sila James Strong po mga kapatid. Isa sa mga translators committee ng ng revised version 1881. That's why dahil unitarian sila so oneness ang iba po mga kapatid. They they believe oh, that that hindi Trinity ang Diyos. At marami pa silang ibang belief po mga kapatid. Alam mo niyo ano resulta? If you read, if you compare revised version with the King James Bible, ay obvious na obvious na kinorap nila yung deity ni Kristo. They corrupted the deity of Christ. So they they have some they, they, this this is the only book mga kabatid, English Bible that exalts the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That gave Jesus Christ its rightful place in the scripture. That he is God manifest in the flesh. But these versions, especially the first ever version after the King James Bible, with the translators were were unitarian, were oneness. Some of them, they believe that salvation is by work. Amen. And so it affects their translation. It's a re- so important ang belief. So we look at the belief of these translators on the scriptures. They believe that the scriptures, even in any translation, as long as it is faithfully translated, they said that it's the word of God. So that's very important. So they, they say, the translator itself would say, that these are not their words because they tra- just translate it. It's not theirs. It's God's. Amen. They believe on justification by faith. They were not Calvinists. They believe justification by faith. They'll believe justification in the blood. The good thing is this is not a Calvinistic book. And the translators are anti-Calvinism during those days. Yeah, that, That's a good thing, po, mga kapatid. And they have a clear clear position on justification. They believe that justification is in the blood of Jesus Christ. I gave you some quotes. I gave you some documents last time po mga kapatid about that. Amen. So also, they believe on regeneration, on the new birth. They, they have a sound belief on regeneration or the new birth. They believe that once the believer is saved, he is now partakers of that divine nature po mga kapatid. They believe on also on their position also on baptism. They do not believe on baptismal regeneration. They do not believe also on baby sprinkling or babe infant baptism. They don't believe also in infant baptism. Amen. So that's, I, I showed you some documents, John, last time. Their belief on the eternal life, their belief on how to understand the Bible was, was ano po, mapted, very, very, uh, ano po, enlightening po mga kapatid. So, uh, they believe even on the built-in dictionary that ang Bible ay my built-in dictionary. And uh, they their stance on also on the new version, their position also on the new version that uh, that uh, 
the, the King James translators saw their Bibles as the final English one, which no one could say anything against po mga kabatid. They would not approve po mga kabatid of further tampering with the English Bible. Ayaw nila yon. Kaya sabi nila, let me quote po mga kabatid, uh, from the book Cambridge History of the Bible, volume number 3, page 164, sabi niya, the chief overseer of the translation is if every man's humor should be followed, there would be no end of translating. Sabi niya, they chided, they, they also chided mga kapatid, ancient heretics who made changes in the Bible's text And the translator's remark regarding the consequent omission is some ancient Greek manuscript as well as the Catholic New Testament. And their word on that was, neither was there, there is this chopping and changing in the more ancient times, but uh, ancient times only, but also late. So not only ang chopping at saka changing ng, ng mga text is Nandun, not only in ancient times, but even in the late Pumatsa. So that, the point is, they warned their generations and future uh, believers who would ignore the Bible or resort to private interpretation or even to Bible version. Kaya ang, ang sabi nila, Ye brought unto fountains of living water which ye dig not, do not cast earth into them, or receive not so great things in vain, Be not like a swine to tread under the foot of so precious things, neither like yet dogs to tear and abuse holy things. Starve not yourselves. He set at his word before us to do read it. So that's that's your stance po mga kapatid. At sabi niya, sabi niya about the Catholics, sabi niya, the Catholics were in such a new more of translating the scriptures that Satan taking occasion by them, they did strive He could, and out of uncertain and manifold variety of translation, so to mingle all things that nothing might seem to be left certain and firm in them, po mga kapatid. So, and of course, their their translate uh, their quote on or their stand on the translators of the translators regarding the printing of those that is coming from Vatican, and they said that there are in infinite differences. May of them weighty and ma uh, many of them are weighty and material. So infinite differences. So siya na mismo nagsabi ng kanilang work of translation ay hindi po ito kaparehas ng Catholic na translation. So that is also to dispel the notion na ito daw ang Bible ng King James galing sa Catholic. Uh, you don't, you have not even maybe read history and studied the history of the English Bible. Do you understand that this is an anti-Catholic book? This is an anti-Catholic book po mga kapatid. So hindi, hindi po ay din pong ganun. Meron, meron po silang lums, uh, meron po sila kanilang translation po ng time po na yun. But of course, the King James Bible is ang mga nagtra-translate po nito mga believer, mga Christians po mga kapatid. Amen. So of course, we look at the works produced by the translators. Now, now as we as we go further po mga kapatid dito um, as we as we study continually okay dito po sa atin pong will be looking will be looking at this po mga kapatid ito pong ito pong uh, the King James ay uh, the King's translators retracing their footsteps so we'll be looking at them and siguro we still have a little time po mga kapatid to continue on this and maybe we will just talk about one or two or three depending po sa ilang translators so we will retrace their footsteps we will somehow study look at their credentials look at who they are kasi mga kapatid, ito po ang gusto kong sasabihin na gusto ko sasabihin sa inyo na ito lang ang Bible ang napaka-transparent. Even not only in their translations. Kasi napag-aralan natin yung rules of translations. We studied about the rules of translations. Napaka-transparent po sila 
na hindi po nila to tinago nung translate nila hindi lang nila silang nag-aaral pero pinasa nila sa mga learned men in England na napa-check nila sa mga alam nila mga pastors at spiritual men na makatulong dinistribute po ito sa mga common men to check at they, they are open for criticism kung may nakita sila pupunta lang sila lalapit lang sila sa translator at i sabihin nila kung what they think is the translation or the good uh, the best translation for this and that word so they were they were transparent on that but not only they're transparent in their translations that our king james bible has also a transparent translators ang ibig kong sabihin ang kanilang buhay ay hindi lihim mababasa mo Magikita mo, you can even type sa Google, you can even uh, search marami ng mga documents ngayon. Unlike dati po mga kabatid, ngayon, pwede mo siya makita at makilala mo. And not only that, they are also well-known people. They are not just somebody in their, uh, they are not just nobody in their time. But they are well-known people because of their exceptional God-given abilities. So therefore, they have, they, we have a complete records of their biography. So they're op an open book and they were well-known people in their time. They were decorated people. So hindi po sila mga sikreto. So ang kaning life is an open book. Therefore, we could study it po mga kapatid. We could look at it po mga kapatid. That's why ganun po. No? So unlike sa mga modern version na mga translators po mga kapatid, unlike sa mga modern version ng mga translators, ang kanila pong ano po mga kapatid, ang kanila pong mga translators, hindi natin kilala. Not only hindi natin alam kung paano nila translate, anong proseso ang ginagamit nila. Not only hindi natin alam kung anong ginawa nila sa translation, sikreto nilang ginawa. It was not distributed to the churches, to the pastors, to the ministers of God, yung mga NIV, yung mga New King James, yung mga modern version, they were not distributed. And they were not ordered by authorities and kings. They are just they just make up their mind and make some projects. They are not sanctioned by any form, so they just create a group or a committee, committee quote unquote. Then they decided to have a translation. And you know the motive was not really to distribute the Bible to all men, but of course the printing, the the cost, the the sales, the the money. That was the thing. Hindi sinikreto sadyang may lumabas na lang na merong bagong version ngayon. Ang pangalan ay New International Version. Ito ay easier to understand. They will just they will start to slander, they'll start to accuse of the King James to be some of something, pero hindi naman totoo and they'll start to para lang makabenta, they'll start to have that sales talk, but you never know kung paano paano nila ginawa. Hindi mo kilala kung sino yung mga behind doon. But one thing as we studied about that, some of their translators are even an open lesbian by the name of Virginia Mollencott po mga kapatid who practice an open lesbianism a homosexual po mga kapatid who even wrote that the, that God is a female. Can you imagine that? Could you trust a translator like that? You never know po mga kapatid. Hindi mo alam kung mga saved ba mga tao na yon, if they have a spiritual life or ano po. So, sinikreto, unlike dito sa ating King James Bible, not only it's well known for 400 years, but this is an open book. The, we have biographies and and we have a, a complete full uh, excerpts of biographies sa kanilang buhay that is open, not only sa mga libraries Oxford, but even open you could even read and watch and learn sa kanilang buhay po mga kapatid so that's what the difference between the king james bible sa sa ito po mga kapatid at uh, nakakalungkot na yun po ang mga tao ay they they departed from this king james because na brainwash po sila dit dahil daw it's hard to understand it's old it's archaic chismis lang po yun bakit na intindihan mo bakit naintindihan ko kung hard to understand pa? Bakit naintindihan ng mga farmers? Bakit naintindihan ng mga uneducated people? Dahil ang issue sa Bible, of the issue of understanding the Bible is not language. It is the Holy Spirit's illumination. You could have a perfect text, but you still cannot understand, not, not unless the Holy Spirit will open the mind 
of that believer. So hindi po issue po yung ano po mga, ang issue salvation, are you saved? Kung wala kang Holy Spirit, hindi ka din makaintindi sa Biblia. So ano lang po yun po mga kapatid, hindi po na, na brainwash na sa ah, dito tayo sa NIV, nadala lang sila sa cell stock. But most of those people na nadala, those are also ignorant of history. Ignorant about where this Bible came from po mga kapatid. So, but with this po mga kapatid, we have an opportunity this morning to learn about these men. So, I cannot promise to study every one of them, but maybe we will summarize also. We will summarize ang kanila pong mga buhay po mga kapatid dahil hindi naman natin po ma maano to lahat po mga kapatid. No? Isa summarize lang natin ang kanilang buhay at kung ano yung mga kailangan nating tingnan, yun, yun din po ang atin pong ano po mga kapatid. So, Itong names na ito, itong mga tao na ito, the names of these men are now hardly known. But prior to our time, they are very well known. Around the mga 1500, 1600, even in the early 1700, they are very well known. Just like yung mga sikat ba ng mga tao ngayon, after 10 years, after 20 years, there will come a generation na hindi na sila kilala. Bito mga tao na ito, they were well known in their time, but now po mga kapatid, they are hardly known to more than a few persons po mga kapatid. Yet po mga kapatid, in the providence of God, okay, yung fruits ng kanilang labors have spread to a far distant po mga kapatid. It spread to a far distant. Uh, it reached to you, it reached to me. And have laid a broad and even a deep foundation of mighty empires. Can you imagine this book have used by God to even to start a civilization, a nation, a country, to shape a a kingdom or an empire, to to raise a king, to 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 plant many churches. What Bible had been used by God for many many years in history? This book. It's been a witnesses on how England become powerful. This this book is a witness of of how America, the once great United States of America, has been founded. And many many Christian nations, po mga kapatid, and it reached to the Philippines how it it turned, amen, Catholicism upside down. Also, when this book came to our to our country, po mga kapatid. And have afforded many of these, po mga kapatid. This book endured. They it afforded to multitude strength to endure many adversity. This book had been attacked. This book had been examined by many, many critics, by many, many enemies, po mga kapatid. But what a blessing, po mga kapatid. Up to this day, it survived. It endures. It's still available, po mga kapatid. And hindi natin alam, hindi natin kilala mga tao na ito up to now po mga kapatid, not unless we will study them and look at them okay, deliberately. But sa mata ng Panginoon on that judgment day, only God can disclose. Only God can reveal how many millions and millions through the instrumentality of their labor have been made wise unto salvation only god can unveil how many precious souls who got saved under the preaching of this only god can unveil that judgment day and only god can can reveal or can disclose in that judgment day po mga kapatid in that in that in that judgment seat of christ how many churches how many lives been changed Because of this book, but praise God, po mga kapatid, and because there are few good men whom God used their labors and how it helped many people and have been made wise unto salvation. Mga kapatid, so we have to take note on that, po mga kapatid, and. And with this, po mga kabadet, I let's start with let's start let's start with this. Let me share my slides para makita po natin once again. 
Let's start with the first group. Okay. Let's start with the first group. And let's know some of them po mga kabated. And these are the group ng ano po mga kabated ng first Westminster Company. So binigyan ko kayo ng overview ng list kanina. But let's these are let's study the the group of the Westminster. And these men translated the historical books. Anong ano ang translate naman taga Westminster po mga kabated? They are Genesis. Okay, with the Genesis and ending with the second book of Kings or the second Kings. So from Genesis to second Kings. Kung kung bilangin mo po yun po mga kapatid ay talagang marami po yun. No? Kung bilangin mo ilang books yun ang kanilang naisulat. So yun po ang kanilang contribution ng kanilang company po mga kapatid is they're writing the book of Genesis all the way to second Kings. So that was the contribution of the first uh, company which is the Westminster company po mga kapatid. So that's their project. Now let's learn. Let's learn. Um, um, a translator out from Westminster po mga kapatid. His name is Lancelot Andrews. Let's start with Lancelot Andrews. He was the president. He was the the president dito po sa, sa committee po na ito. He's the leader, si Lancelot Andrews. And let's look at him. Now, when you talk about Lancelot Andrews during the 1500, 1600, naku po mga kapatid, he is a very well-known man. Ang tawag sa kanila mga geniuses, mga wise men po mga kapatid. But looking at the life of Lancelot Andrews, Lancelot Andrews spent his vacation each year learning a new language. That's that's his ano po mga kapatid. That's his that's his uh, hobby. Pupunta siya sa iba't ibang lugar para lang matuto kasi ang gift niya is tongues. I mean not speaking in an unknown tongue. I mean, I'm talking about he is skillful in madali siya matuto, nakatuto sa sa isang ano, sa isang sa isang uh, lingwahe. So, this Lancelot Andrews spent his vacation each year learning a new language. And of course, for all of that vacations po mga kapatid, he learned a total of 15 languages. So when you talk about 15 languages, hindi lang to mga intro, hindi lang to mga languages na mga greetings. I, I, meron po doon sa buhol dati, may mga may tour guide doon or ano bang tawag doon, taga-entertain. Meron siyang greetings at least 50 languages. Pero para mga high hello in 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 Japanese, in Chinese, in in Dutch, in in French, in ganun ganun, ganun lang pero para mga high hello hello lang mga ganun. But ito when when this Lancelot Andrew learned of 15 languages, do you know 15 languages? He can ano po, illegibly write and read. Okay? Write and read and speak. You understand? He can illegibly write, okay, and read and speak 15 languages fluently. Speak fluently in 15 languages. And that's why this historian, this skill cost Thomas Fuller a church historian in 1800 po mga kapatid to suggest that Andrews could have been interpreter general. Could you imagine interpreter general at the confusion of the tongues at Babel? Kung sasabihin mo siya yung magiging interpreter general, can you imagine for at least, pwede kang lumapit sa kanya for 15 languages? He can translate, he could be translator for 15 languages. I mean, accurately, I mean, he could speak all these things fluently. Hindi lang something na mga intro-intro lang or mga greetings lang. Do you know of a, a linguist like that? Amen. So yung mga Hebrew, mga Greek is, is just like their vernacular. Latin is just like a vernacular, which is yung Hebrew, Greek, Latin is just a common, ano po mga kapatid, a common thing lang na matutunan sa mga panahon po nila po mga kapatid. This is Lancelot Andrews. And sabi niya, as a child po mga kapatid, he studied so hard when others played that if his parents and masters had not forced him to play, okay, with them. And he would not have played at all. Can you imagine? Kailangan pang pilitin. Hindi siyang pilitin, kundi pilitin yung kanilang 
Mga ano, sige na, laruin mo naman si Lance. Si Lancelot, laruin nyo naman. Or ikaw, Lancelot, maglaro ka naman. Bakit? He's so engrossed with studying. He's so engrossed with learning. Of course, a normal child would play. Of course, a normal child would just enjoy. A normal child, I have, I have a student here. We have a son, a homeschool. Anong normal sa kanya? Ayaw niya mag-study, gusto niya mag-play. But itong, itong tao na ito, no wonder, ginamit siya ng Panginoon because he studied so hard when others played. When others played. So, hindi po ito, wala po itong palikuliko sa kanyang buhay po mga kapatid. No wonder he could have that po mga kapatid. And another thing, another feature, that each year he walked 30 miles home from college to see his parents during spring vacation. And his walking partner was Edmund Spencer. And now, dito si Edmund Spencer, now a world-famous poet who invented the Spencerian stanza. If you are studying literature, you, you are aware of, of him. Mga kapatid, itong Spencerian stanza. If you're studying about the, the poetry and all of that. Amen. And uh, of course, and many other poetic devices which made his poetry so musical that he became known as the poet's poet. So Edmund Spencer. So that was his close friend. So although hindi man translator si Edmund Spencer, pero of course, iron sharpen at iron. Tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. So ang mga kaibigan nila, hindi din pipitsugin. Mga well-known in all the world din po mga kapatid. So ibig sabihin, he's walking for 30 miles. So ang 30 miles mga kapatid, for almost almost 60 kilometers, maglalakad po mga kapatid pag pauwi sa kanila. And they're just spending talking and fellowshipping po mga kapatid. So ang result po mga kapatid, later on in his life, he become a dean. He was a dean of Westminster. So that's why he's, he's the dean of the university in Westminster. And also because of that influence that he had with Spencer, Andrews had the children bring him their exercises in poetry and verse. So to examine their proficiency. So imagine po mga kapatid, he can do that. Not only the translation, but even in poetry because of the influence of his friends po mga kapatid. But a good thing is, he was also a chaplain to Queen Elizabeth and called the Stars of Preachers. So he is not just po mga kapatid. He is not just, amen, a, in academics, a learned man, but he's a preacher. And he is a preacher to Queen Elizabeth. Now take note. If you will become a king's preacher, if you will become a, pre, uh, a queen's preacher, if you will become an official an official preacher amen you must be somebody you must be you must you must earn such such ano po, credentials po mga kapatid that to to get the attention of queen elizabeth there was another document po mga kapatid that even queen elizabeth is and even king james and and queen elizabeth is they're trying to hide Yung, yung outline ni outline ni Lancelot Andrews po mga kapatid doon sa kanilang pillow at babasahin ulit at itago ulit I mean ganun po ka, and, and he was called the star of preachers meron tayong meron tayong uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon ang tawag po ni Charles Haddon Spurgeon sa history he's called as the prince of preachers pero bago pa sumikat nagiging orator magaling na orator si si Spurgeon there was first before him and his name is Lancelot Andrew and he is called as the stars of preachers just think about that and think about that this is a ano po mga kapatid this is a Shakespearean period imagine a Shakespearean period speaking of oratory speaking of poetry speaking of speech I mean, that was their exposure. Amen. The Elizabethan age was the 
It was the, the dawn of the age of reason. And he was called the stars of preachers. Amen. And as such po mga kabated, he was the means of converting many papis by his preaching and disputations. Did you imagine? And daming mga papis, when I say papis, yung mga Catholics, yung mga ministers, yung mga, of, uh, mga ministers ng Vatican, ng Catholic Church, or even yung mga, mga, mga members ng Roman Church have been converted by his preachings and disputations. So, I mean, hindi mo mapagkaila na ginamit po ito ng Panginoon. Amen. But the most, one of the most outstanding sa kanyang credentials is this. In humility, the motto he engraved on his seal. Meron siyang seal. Na, diba? Kasi they are known people, they have their own seal. Meron ngang seal ang mga lawyers at the other. But his motto that he, he engraved sa kanyang seal, nakakarb po ito. And who is sufficient for these things? He who is sufficient for these things. And that was the context sa chapter number three that our sufficiency is of God. Mga kapatid, who is sufficient for these things? Kaya sabi dito sa verse 16, tingnan mo sa verse 16. To the one, we are the savor of death unto death, and to other, the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? Can you imagine? In his life, in spite of his achievement, in spite of his, in spite of what they have done, but the motto is still, who is sufficient for these things? What was the answer of that, po mga kapatid? In chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 5, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Now, if you study, if you look at carefully, that was quoted in verse 16. Ito pong, and who is sufficient for these things? But the next verse, the thought continue in verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Wow. Where we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. So, mga kapatid, this person here, or one of the honest translators, not only honest translators, but one of the honest men, and you could say by the fruit, you could say by the fruit of their labor that these are, they are not one of the many which corrupt the word of God. And that's, that's the truth about that, po, mga kapatid. Another unparalleled feature of this man is not just his outstanding mind and ability in language, but this is his devotion po mga kapatid. And many hours he spent each day in private and family devotions, which many, many of the preachers miss and many times I missed. But this man is well known of Spending each day, many hours, in private and family devotions. And last but not the least, po mga kapatid, for me, this is the greatest feature that he has. And that is Lancelot Andrews spent five hours a day in prayer. He spent five hours a day. Just think about that. A day, five hours a day in prayer. Do you know of somebody? I, I've seen somebody many times they prayed. Sometimes some people prayed seven times a day, some ten times a day, some but of course they prayed for for one minute, two minutes, thirty minutes. But do you know of somebody in our generation who can spend five hours a day? In prayer, not five times, five hours. He literally practiced, he literally practiced sweet hours of prayer. Satin, sweet minutes of prayer. 
sweet seconds of prayer. But sa kanya, sweet hours. Not just an hour, but sweet hours of prayer. You see that? That's why I'm saying is, not only they are unparalleled when it comes to their academics, they are also unparalleled when it comes to their devotions. They are not just educators. They are pastors. They are preachers. They are men of God. And I'm telling you, they're godly. Amen. They're spiritual. And that's why God could just bless this book. Because these are the holy men of God. Whom God used, the reflection of who God is, that holiness po mga kapatid. And even looking at this, could you imagine, may mga, may mga Baptist brider, kasi he's not a Baptist preacher, but he's a believer, he's saved, he's a preacher. But can you imagine, some of those Baptist belief will say, he's not part of the bride, at itong, dahil pangalan niya ay Baptist, member siya ng isang certain group na Baptist, dahil siya daw ay Baptist, may tama daw siyang baptism and all of this, tapos siya kasama sa bride, ito is spectator lang. Siya karnal, siya ay talagang walang nagagawa sa faith at walang nagagawa sa, sa, sa Christianity, but rather a disgrace, tapos, tapos, part siya ng bride, then ito si Lancelot Andrew, hindi. That's the folly of that, ano po mga kapatid, that manipulation of that private interpretation doctrine. Can you imagine a Baptist bridism? Could you imagine na si, si adulterer na si, si ano po mga kapatid, sino ba yung president ng Amerika na bago kay ano, after kay, bago kay Bush, na si Bill Clinton, do you understand that Bill Clinton was a Baptist? At sabihin mo, part siya ng bride, pakasalan siya, tapos he's an adulterer, he's, he's, he's ano po mga kapatid, disgrace to Christianity, at itong si Lancelot Andrews na ginagamit ng Panginoon ay spectator lang, o contributed na na-enjoy natin ang, ang Bible ngayon, at ang mga Baptist sabihin, I'm a King James Bible! Pero sabihin mo, sa bilip mo, hindi to part sila ng bride ng mga tao nito. Hello. But I'm saying is, even now, their devotion to God, their love for the Word of God, their love, their walk with the Lord is still unparalleled. That's why, do you know of the modern versions? Do you know of the qualification of the translations that sprout and that brought many sales? Have you studied their lives? You could not find them. They're unknown. They're unknown. Amen. But this man over here has a touch of God. Is a touch of God. And in been used by God mightily. So work ng Panginoon. That's one, Lancelot Andrews. Let's look at the next one. Po, still part of the Westminster po mga kapatid. Is si John Overall. Si John Overall. So this is still part of the Westminster Company. And we'll look at John Overall's life. Okay. A little bit. No? So John Overall was raised as an orphan. He was raised in an orphan. And Overall becomes such a Latin scholar in troubled him to speak English. It troubled him to speak English. Could you imagine gano ka fluent to sa Latin? And very important po itong language po nila sa pagtatranslate. Na sa sobrang niyang flu fluent sa Latin, nahihirapan siya magsalita ng English. Nalilito. Ito po, ito po. This is my experience po, mga kapatid. Ako, I, I'm a mixed language, no? Kaya hindi ako fluent sa lahat. Na, na, nagkaroon ako ng confusion minsan. Na mimix ko sometimes, nagsibuano ako, sometimes nagtagalog ako. Kaya minsan, hindi ko na alam kung paano. That's why, uh, sometimes ipag-mix ko, doon ako komportable. So, may confusion pati sa 
pati sa pag pag ano po pag pronounce may confusion kasi may bar uh, may mga intonations tayo may mga may mga kasanayan tayong mga mga dialects na pwedeng madala mo dito pag magsalita ka na English sometimes tawanan ka sometimes oh, na bisaya uh, ganun din naman sa lahat ng language yung mga Tagalog yung mga Ilocano mga gan- madala mo ba at tapos pag i-mix mo may, magkaroon ka ng trouble ito yung ito yung problema ni ni John overall kagaya lang sa atin po ma'am tension Ano bang ano nito no? So but this one is an orphan but of course hindi naman nagiging barrier sa kanyang pagka-orphan yet as a pastor he was a pastor also po mga kapatid responding to a soul sick church member okay and there was a church member who wondered if Christ died for him so he overall preached a simple sermon which exposed the error of Calvinism. So this is one of the documents that our King James translators are not Calvinists. They're not Catholics and they're not Calvinists. And take note on that po mga kapatid. And let me quote dito po, sabi niya, Christ died for all men sufficiently, for the believer only effectually, as the sun that shineth sufficiently to give light to all, though it doth it effectually only to them that open their eyes as the water that is sufficient to quench all thirsty, but doth it only to them that drink it. So Christ, the sum of righteousness, the water of life. Wow. Well, to refute a Calvinist, that's it. That Christ died for all. Of course, we know po mga kapatid, na ang lahat ay si Kristo, ang kanyang ginawa ay sufficient para sa lahat. But we know, ang believer lang ang maka-benefit, ang maka-enjoy po mga kapatid. But the provision, it was for all. Amen. So, sino bang hindi mabali na kalbinista dyan sa time na yan? But imagine, very threat, malaking threat po sila. Kaya galit, alam nyo po ba na galit ang mga kalbinist sa King James Bible? You know what's the difference between the King James Bible and the Geneva Bible? The Geneva Bible is, of course, it is printed in Switzerland. Geneva, Switzerland, po mga kapatid. Which is lungga ng mga Calvinist. Lungga ng mga Calvinist ang Switzerland. And ma- meron din doon sa mga Calvinist na mga translators ng Geneva Bible. Pero ito, iba to. Iba po ang... King James Bible. Amen. Kaya madaming galit sa Calvinist dito dahil sa mga translators na ito, marami ding galit na mga. Pansin mo, ang Calvinist po mga kapatid, para makaget away sila sa kanilang explanation, they have to go back to the Greek daw or to the Hebrew kasi ayaw nilang mag sa word for word. Kasi ang word na all John and he died for all and ganito kasi yan, sa original ay ganito kasi yan. Kasi takot sila dito eh. Kaya mag-resort sila sa iba. You know, their fin- the Calvinist, their final authority is not the Bible. It is their theology. That's, the pro- that's their problem. It's their theology and it's not the Bible. When, when the King James Bible will go contrary, when the text of the King James Bible will go contrary to their theology, they will correct the Bible and defend their theology. That's it. That's the, the, the SOP of a Calvinist po mga kapatid. Dan po natin. So, obviously, the, our translators were not Calvinists. And overall's burden for the souls of men ushered him to the side of Father Henry Garnet. And just as this murder, if you remember sa story ni, if you remember sa biography that we learn about King James, do you remember that November 5th? Okay, November 5th, that gunpowder plot doon mismo sa Westminster I don't mean mismo sa Hampton Court sa ilalim ng Hampton Court kung saan mag-meet yung day na mag-meet para magkaroon ng translation project may plot of assassination po mga kapatid on that November 5th po mga kapatid may plot of assassination doon at doon sa underground maraming gunpowder at paputokin they could be patay pati hari pati Pati ang ano po mga kabatid, pati yung mga translators na nagmi-meet po doon. At ang behind po doon, 
was this Henry Garnet is a Catholic priest po mga kapatid. Ang siya yung siya yung men behind dito, siya yung mastermind po dito. And ang kanya pong ang kanya pong ano, ang kanya pong accomplice, ang kanya pong assassin was by the name of Guy Fox. We studied about that. Yung parang yung Guy Fox po mga kapatid, if you remember that, merong merong pong actually ang paputok po sa sa ano sa sa England, meron silang celebration na nagpaputok sila. Ang parang New Year sa atin, 'di ba? Nagpapaputok tayo sa New Year. Sa kanila ay nasa November 5. And that was a celebration kung saan sinunog po yung si Guy Fox. Bakit may paputok? Because of gunpowder. Nahuli kasi by God's providence na na-uncover yung sikreto na yun at hindi natuloy yung gunpowder plot. I don't know if you have been familiar yung remember remember the 5th of November. So yun, yun yung special event sa England up to now po mga kabatid. And that was a celebration of God's providence na hindi natuloy. Now, ito po, ito si ganito to kay spiritual si John overall. Because of course, sa mahal niyang kaluluwa at naintindihan loving your enemies. Now, his burden for souls that he take to the side, he ushered him to the side of Father Henry Garnet just as this murder was about to be hanged po mga kapatid for his part in the gunpowder plot po mga kapatid. Overall, beg him to trust Jesus Christ. Beg him to trust Jesus Christ as Savior and express a true and lively faith toward God. But of course, sadly, the response of the priest is don't bother me. Never mind. Just forget about that. But of course, a soul winner. Who could do that? Ikaw yung isa sa mga tao na nandun, na gather. Ito yung nagpa-plot for your assassination. But he still managed to go before he was hung. Amen. Before he was hung and told him the gospel. But of course, it's no longer your accountability when they reject. Mga kapatid. And that's John overall. Okay. Isa na lang. Isa na lang muna para ma- mabilis tayo. Na. Isa na lang kasi time na pala tayo. Isa lang. Para hindi tayo mabitin. Let's, let's learn from Henry Saville. Si Henry Saville is still part of the Westminster Group, Westminster Company. Si Henry Saville. Okay. And Henry Saville, his skills range from tutor to Queen Elizabeth. He's a tutor to Queen Elizabeth. Now, kanina, chaplain. Ito, tutor. Now, ikaw. Ikaw ay tutor sa king or tutor sa queen in a great empire, in a great kingdom. You must be somebody. Because could you imagine ang mga prince or princess or kings and queens, they have the best tutor. Now, this man, Henry Saville, was a tutor. And now, look at this. He was a tutor of the language of Latin. He was a tutor of the language of Greek. And ito po yung isa sa mga astounding work niya. He is a mathemat- uh, tutor of mathematics. Now, if you are studying math, the history of mathematics, malaki po ang contribution po ni Henry Saville. If you, if you googled him out, and try to look at the biography of Henry Saville, try to look at the Wikipedia, and try to, and you will find some of them that he's connected to mathematics, and he has great contribution to mathematics, po mga kapatid. So, <laughs> I'm saying, hindi to basta-basta, hindi to mga pipitsugin. And also, he is also the translator of the his- histories of Tacitus. If you know Tacitus during the first century, po mga kapatid, This is ano po siya po ay parang kakontemporary ni Josephus was a Christian Josephus was a, a Jewish historian and sila ito ay si Tacitus is a very well known historian who wrote the, the history of Rome po mga kabatid and the founding of the empire of Rome si Tacitus siya yung isa sa translator ng kanyang work and biography ng work ni Tacitus that's what make him known he is a tutor to the queen 
Latin, Greek, and mathematics po mga kapatid. He tra traversed Europe gathering rare Greek manuscript of the Bible and ancient manuscript of the works of the great 4th century Greek uh, century Greek preacher John Chrysostom. So, yun ang naging gamit po mga kapatid, no? So, malaki ang malaki ang nagiging nakuha niya, no? Nakuha niya na, na paggather while si Lancelot Andrew nagbabakasyon sa ibang bansa, nagle-learn ng new language. Ito naman si Henry of Seville kumukuha ng naghahanap ng mga Greek manuscripts, ng mga rare, nagko-collect ng Greek manuscript which is very needful. It was it was uh, it was used para sa kanilang translator as a contribution po mga kapatid. And the later he com complied mga kapatid, or compiled po mga kapatid, and published in the eight volume set, the writings of Chrysostom allowed the King James translators to first hand or to see first hand the true text of the earliest Greek New Testament. Because of that, nagkaroon sila ng access of one of the earliest Greek New Testament and part of the diligently comparison or compared po mga kapatid yung, yung para sa kanilang work. Kasi madami silang references po mga kapatid. At isa po yun sa nakakontribution ni Henry Saville po mga kapatid. And Another thing, Saville gave a very early edition of the Gospels in Russians to the Bodleian Library as a gift. So siya mismo ang nag-translate ng Gospels. Ibig sabihin, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. In Russian. Amen. So they're, they're I mean, I, I hate to use professional, but they're really expert, mga kapatid, when it comes to, to their craft, when it comes to translations. They're not inexperienced. Imagine, yung mga nag-translate na sila, medyo may, may edad na sila eh. In their young age, they live under the, the reign of Bloody Mary. And they're, in their growing up also, up to their young, to become a young man, they studied with an open ano na, uh, knowledge na and, and education sa time ni Queen Elizabeth. Okay? So... Uh, he was an expert on the earliest English Bible manuscript, publishing from original manuscripts, the written histories of England before Bede. So, of course, if you study Bede po, mga kapatid, yung history ni Bede, isa po siya sa ginagamit, isa sa, sa mga ginagamit po, mga kapatid, these are what we call yung mga pre, pre wycliffe translations. Okay, the pre-Wycliffe translations ng mga Anglo-Saxons ng mga Bibles po, mga kapatid. Of course, sa time po nila, ni Bede po, mga kapatid. So, Saville would have been well aware of the text, the, the oldest English Bibles, because, sabi niya, our records tells us of translation of the whole Bible into the same language, which is the Saxon, by Bida, of course, pagka-read na niya is Bede, within 40 years after the 700s so imagine that's around 700 uh, century po mga kapatid na makikita po natin yung time na yun no? so uh, they have that yun ang contribution ni Henry Saville sa kanya po ano po mga kapatid so next off is we will look at Hadrian Saravia for the next time po mga kapatid natin pag-aralan so at this moment Let's have a glimpse that law. We learn about Lancelot Andrews. Then we learn about, mga kapatid, the next thing by John Overall. Then we learn about Henry Saville. And so far, when it comes to academics, when it comes to their ministry, they are ministers, they are pastors. They're, they're, they're not educa just educators and learned men, but they're Christians, they're pastors. They have been used by God. Amen. They have they have devotion and undying and parallel devotion to God and to His Word and to the work of the Lord. So we 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 can still study this next week and learn more about these men behind the King James Bible. We only talk about three, and there are so many. So I will select mga ilan lang po mga kapatid just for the purpose ng ating lesson. But I thank God po mga kapatid that. You're here listening for us with us this morning. And thank God for the opportunity that we can have this lesson po mga kapatid. At subaybay po tayo sa programa po ito every Monday. 
And tomorrow, we will continue our study on rightly dividing the word of truth. And thank God that once again, we can have our workman's treasure. See you tomorrow, brethren. And I thank God for what the Lord has given to us this morning. I hope it helped you. and I hope it, it, it add joy to your Christian life. I hope it in, give you somehow an inspiration. And above all, I hope it would make you to love this book even more. And that's it. And thank you, Panginoon, sa inyong blessings sa amin. Patuloy gamitin ang mga tao na ito, spiritual men na ito, Lord, as we studied na uh, maintindihan namin, Lord, na bakit nagkaroon kaming such a wonderful book, Lord, dahil you pick this men up, Panginoon, and use them mightily for your honor and glory. Help us, Lord, to be blessed and to be encouraged also by their lives and how also they devoted themselves to you. Thinking, Lord, kung gaano na kataas ang ilang, kanilang accomplishment, pwede naman silang hindi na maglingkod sa ministry, pwede naman silang magpasikat na lang. But, Panginoon, they gave themselves for the cause. And we thank you for these men that you use. Na sana, Lord, you will instill in our hearts also that inspiration and that courage also, Panginoon, and that burning desire also to serve you in our own little way, Panginoon. And we thank you for this. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And, amen. and God bless everyone. Thank you for following. Thank you for uh, listening to us this morning. And uh, have a good day.